In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use the request response messaging pattern to fetch data in a microservices system using the mass transit library and RabbitMQ as the message transport. Let me explain what we are trying to implement using the request response messaging pattern. We have a system with two services. One is for CRUD operations on the article entity and another service for reporting purposes and calculating analytics. So we want to expand the get article feature in the newsletter API service to also return the number of views on an article. To achieve this, we need to go to the reporting API and get this data somehow because this data is stored in that services database and there are multiple ways how we can approach this. One possible solution is just sending an HTTP call to the reporting API and then getting a response back. However, I'm going to show you a different solution using the request response pattern. So let's start by expanding the article response to also include the number of views for this article and I'm going to explain along the way what the request response pattern is. So I'm adding a property which will represent the number of views to the article response. Then in the get article feature, let's head over to the handler for the query. So we're fetching the article from the services database. If the article is null, we're going to return a failure result. And if it's not null, we're going to publish an event using mass transit and the publish endpoint service. And we're publishing the article viewed event, which will be handled by the reporting API and is going to calculate the required analytics for the article. So what you see here is publish subscribe messaging but mass transit also supports the request response pattern. The basic idea is that we create a request and response message. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to create a new class in the contracts project, which I will call get article views. So let's create this type. I'm going to use this file to create my request and response messages, and I'm going to use records for this. So the first message is get article views request, and this is our request message. It needs one property to represent the article ID, and this will be just a GUID value. Then I need one more message to represent a response. So let's create a public record, and we call it get article views response. And let's create this type. I'm also going to include the article identifier, and I'm going to add one more property, which is going to represent the number of views. So now you should be getting an idea of what the request response pattern is. We're going to send a request message using mass transit that's going to be handled by the reporting API and the reporting API is going to return the response message. So essentially we are sending two messages over the queue and we're getting back a response that we want from the other service. And you see how this is a similar idea to calling the reporting API using HTTP, except here we are using messaging. So how do we use these two message types? Let's go back to the get article feature and I need to inject one more service. The service that I need comes from mass transit and it's called the iRequest client interface. This is the interface that's going to allow us to send our request message and get back a response. So let's specify the get article views request as the type for the request client and let's inject this service. Now you don't need to configure anything explicitly to be able to use a request client. So we can just inject this service directly from the constructor and then how we're going to use this is after confirming that the article isn't null, I'm going to add a variable for my response and I'm going to use my client to asynchronously send this message. So we're going to call get response and the response that we are expecting back is the get article views response. Then I need to create a new message, which is my request message. So new get article views request and let's assign the ID to the one that we have on the article response. So this is as simple as it gets. We send the request message using our request client and we expect to get back on get article views response. Now how we're going to use this is take the article response and the views property and just set the value that we get back on the response message which will have the views property inside. I'm going to show you later how to handle a failure condition but for now, this should be sufficient. Now we also need to make an update in the reporting API to be able to support this. So let's head over there and see how we're going to implement this. We need to add a handler for the get article views request message. 
So we already have a few handlers for our articles in the article created and article viewed files. So let's create our consumer class inside, which I will call get article views consumer. This will implement the iConsumer interface from Mass Transit, and I need to specify what is the message that I'm consuming. This will be my message contract. So get article views request. Let's implement the consumer and I'm going to be needing my database context to fetch the data that's required for the response message. So let's inject the database context. So I'm going to inject the DB context from the constructor, and then we can implement the consume method. So I'll make this asynchronous and let's see what we need inside. All I need to confirm is the number of views that I have for a specific article. So this can be just a straightforward query like this. So await context, and then the views are actually inside of the article events DB set or table. So let's query this table and the query that I'm going to write will check that the event type is an article view. And I also need to confirm that the view is for this article. So I'll say event type is article event type view. And then I'll say that the article ID is equal to the context message and we get the ID from there. So this should give us the where statement that's going to select the relevant events. And then I can just say count async. I can also use the overload that calls the count async method directly, but I prefer writing a where statement and then just having count async afterwards. So now that we have our response, we need to create our response message. I'm going to create a variable, which I will call response, and it's going to be a new get article views response type and I'm going to assign the properties. So the ID will be the context message ID and the views will come from what we just fetched from the database. And then I need to say context. This is my consume context from mass transit and I can say respond async. And I just need to give it the response type and it's going to infer that the return type is the get article views response, which is what we are expecting in our request client. I need to register this consumer with mass transit. So I'm going to add the consumer here. So get article views consumer, and we are ready to test this out. I'm going to send a get request from Postman to fetch an article that already exists in the database. And let's see how this is going to work using the request response messaging pattern. So I'm sending the request to the newsletters API. So we first hit the breakpoint in the handle method of the get article feature and we fetch this article from the database. We check if the article is null and we confirm that it's not null. And if I take a look at the article response, you'll see that the views property has the default value of zero. So now I'm going to use my request client to send a new get article views request message, which is going to be handled by the reporting API. So if I hit continue, we're going to land in the consumer for this message, which is going to check the database of this service and get me back the number of views. So the views is returned and the number is six because I already have six views for this article and we're going to now return a get article views response. If I press continue now, we're going to hit the breakpoint right after we sent the request message and let's take a look at the response. So you'll see that we get back a response with the article ID and the views is six as expected. So now we're going to publish the endpoint for this article view, which we aren't counting in the final result, although you could do that if you wanted to, and we're just going to return the article response to Postman. And if you take a look here, you'll see that the number of views is properly propagated and then set on our DTO. This implementation is very rough. And if I were to introduce a different response type, for example, when an article was not found, then this is going to become very cumbersome. So let's refactor this to move this logic inside of a dedicated service. I'm going to add a new class inside of the articles feature folder, which I will call article views service. And then inside of it, let's move the logic that we already had for using the I request client. So first of all, I'm going to inject the request client and let's add the constructor. Then I'm going to expose one method on this service 
which is going to return the number of views for a specific article. So we can return the article view response directly or we can just return the number of views depending on what we want to do. So let's for example return the number of views as the raw value and let's name this method get views async. We're going to need the identifier for this article and that's everything from the arguments. And then let's copy the logic for sending a request into this service. So I'm going to move this here. We're going to use the ID that we have as the argument. And then we're going to just return the response message and then the number of views. So we're just moving code around. We aren't adding anything new and let's clean up this feature. So instead of using the iRequest client, I'm going to use the article views service and let's give it the proper name. Let's inject this from the constructor in place of the iRequest client and give it a name. So article views service. And then we're just going to assign this to our private read-only field. So article view service gets the value from the constructor argument. And then down below, we're going to say that article response views is equal to article view service. And we just get the views from our reporting API. So we simplified the code inside of the get article feature and we're not dealing with sending a request using mass transit and processing the response. We move that responsibility over to the service. I also need to register the article view service with dependency injection. So I'm going to say builder services add scoped and then article view service. And the reason I'm registering it as a scoped service is because the iRequest client is also a scoped service. So keep this in mind. And with this, we have the same functionality as before, but we encapsulated the logic for the request response messaging pattern in the article view service. And now let's expand on this use case by adding one more message return type. So let's first go to the contracts project and open up the get article views. I'm going to add one more response. It's only going to contain the identifier of the requested article inside and I'm going to name it article not found to represent the use case when an article is null in the reporting API. And this could legitimately happen. So how you would implement this with the request response messaging pattern is in the article views service, you would add the second return type as another generic argument. So let's call this article not found and let's actually append response so that we are using the same naming convention. But now our response contains both types and we need to figure out which one we got back from the service. So how can you do that? Well, mass transit has a few helper methods to allow you to figure that out. And I can say response is, and then provide an out parameter and target my response type. So I'm going to say out and then response and then we're going to say get article views response and let's give it a name of views response and how we're going to use it is just return the number of views from this response so i can say views response and then message and get the number of views to cover the second return type we need to add one more if statement and i'm going to say if response is and then we're going to add an out parameter and we're going to say response and give it a type. I'm going to use the article not found response as the generic argument. And we're going to say not found response as the name of our out parameter. And then based on what we want to do, we need to return some sort of value from this method. A simple solution would be to inject an I logger here with the article view service generic argument. And let's inject the logger from the constructor. So in case that I get an article not found response, I want to log a warning or an error, depending on the severity, that something unexpected happened. I usually would expect to get back a response, but it wasn't found. So let's log a warning saying article not found, and let's pass the article ID as the argument. So we didn't manage to find this article and we're going to return a default value of zero views. This handles our article views service, which is our client side, but we also need to handle this in the consumer on the reporting API side. So let's head over to the consumer. And what I want to do here is add a simple check before we calculate the number of views if we even have this article in the database. Because we are using the article events, getting a value of zero here doesn't mean that we don't have an article. The only way to confirm this 
is to say await db context and then check the articles database set and we can do an any async query. So let's check if there is an article with the ID that we sent in the request message. And if this returns false, then we don't have an article and we want to return a response. So we can say context respond async and let's create an article not found response, assign it the identifier of this article and we're going to have to return from this method. This is really important. So what respond async will do is send this message over to the queue and then it's going to be processed in our article view service. But if you don't add a return here, then this message will also be sent because the code will continue. So keep this in mind when you are implementing your mass transit consumers. So let's give this a try and see how this works in practice. I'm sending the same get request to the newsletters API, but I also deleted the article from the reporting API database so that we test the failure path in our request response pattern. So let's send this request. We're going to land inside of the handler. I'm going to add a breakpoint here and just press continue. So we're going to now land inside of our consumer in the get article views consumer, which is going to handle the get article views request. And it's first going to check if this article exists in the database. If it doesn't, we're going to return an article not found response. And this is because I already deleted this article on purpose. And now we're going to handle this response in the article view service. So we're first going to check if what we got back is an get article views response, and you'll see that it's not, because this is actually an article not found response, which is what we expected. So we're going to log a warning to the console, and we're going to return zero from our get views async method. And we can complete our get article request and return the result back to Postman. So you'll see that we're not getting any views in this case, because we didn't find any data in the reporting API database. While this approach is flexible and we are using messaging, so you have loose coupling to some degree, it's also less performant because you have multiple round trips over the message broker. So first we are sending one message for the request and then we need to send another message over the queue for our response. And then we need to figure out which response we got back. So keep this in mind when you're thinking about which approach to use, this does give you loose coupling, but at the cost of slightly worse performance. Whereas with an HTTP request, you get strong coupling, but the performance could be better in your situation. If you want to learn more about using mass transit in a microservices environment, take a look at this video here, also, make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons on your way out. And until next time, stay awesome.